the theme. Tell your crush that you should stop sharing a bed with them during sleepovers. Tsukiyama. Yamaguchi bit his lip, shooting a look over towards where Tsukishima was lying down beside him on the bed, scrolling through his phone. Hey, Tsuki? What? The blonde boy set the phone down on his chest and turned his face to look straight into Yamaguchi's eyes. The shorter boy flushed a bit pink. Oh, nothing. You sure? MHM. Tsukishima's golden eyes studied Yamaguchi's for a long moment before he turned back to his phone. Okay. Scrolling through his feed, Tsukishima snorted. Jesus Christ, Eren and Kitta posted another photo of them making gooey eyes at each other over boba. God. They are so in love it's gross. Yamaguchi swallowed, forcing out a little laugh. Yeah. So gross. Revolting, really. Absolutely disgusting. I'm getting nauseous just looking at it. Tsuki? Yeah? I think we should stop sleeping in the same bed. What? Tsukishima turned to stare at Yamaguchi. The green-haired boy took a deep breath. Um, I think that we should stop sleeping in the same bed. You know, because it's not like we're little kids anymore, and uh, I just thought. Oh. Uh. Sitting up, Tsukishima pushed himself off of the mattress. Alright. Yamaguchi watched Tsukishima walk towards the closet and slide open the door. Where are you, um, going? Just grabbing a mattress. He pulled out a futon from the closet and started dragging it beside the bed. You don't want us in the same bed anymore, right? Oh, yeah, right. Yamaguchi furrowed his eyebrows as he watched Tsukishima walk forward until the blonde fell out of sight when he plopped down onto the futon. You can have the bed, you know, I'll take. Shut up, Yamaguchi. Okay, um, sorry, Saki. It's fine. Don't worry about it. After another pause, Tsukishima snorted once more. Guess how many stories Bakuto made today? How many? 16. 16 different shots of Akashi's face. Something rustled on the futon below Yamaguchi's line of sight. You. They are so sickeningly in love. Yeah. Yamaguchi swallowed. You. I think I'm having an allergic reaction. I'm seriously going to vomit. I can practically feel the acid crawling up my throat. Yeah, me too. Tsukishima laughed, and they fell into silence. After a long moment, Yamaguchi took a deep breath, pushing himself towards the edge of the bed so that he could peek down at where Tsukishima was sprawled across the mattress. What? Tsukishima didn't even glance up from his phone, one hand scrolling through and the other resting behind his head. Yamaguchi flushed, ducking his head back onto the bed once more. Nothing. Tsukishima only hummed in response, and it was quiet for another moment. Yamaguchi rustled around in the bed a bit, but after waiting for his face to cool down once more, he inhaled deeply before cautiously leaning over to see what Tsukishima was doing. Is there something you want to say, Yamaguchi? The taller boy's gaze never left the screen, but Yamaguchi still flushed. Um? Oh. Uh, me? No. Nothing. Laughing awkwardly, the green-haired boy ducked back onto the bed. Sorry, I sorry, Saki. They fell into silence once more. Yamaguchi picked up his phone, but after a few minutes, he let it drop back down to his side. He bit his lip. Screw it. Carefully placing his hands onto the mattress in order to make sure the covers didn't rustle, he leaned over the edge of the bed to look down at Tsukishima. Yamaguchi. Tsukishima's golden eyes flickered up to stare directly into Yamaguchi's, and the green-haired boy yelped, his hand slipping as he tried to fumble his way back onto the bed and causing him to tumble off the edge. Wah. Tsukishima grunted a little as Yamaguchi landed on top of him, and the shorter boy flushed an even deeper shade of scarlet. Oh my god, Saki, I am so sorry, I didn't mean to. Tsukishima coughed, his voice a little wheeze-like as he recovered his breath. Shut up, Yamaguchi. Okay, I okay, um, sorry, I'll okay. Yamaguchi began to push up off the futon with his hands, 
but he immediately froze when he realized how close his face was to the blondes. So is there a reason why you keep leaning over to stare at me? Tsukishima's golden eyes were burning into Yamaguchi's, and the green-haired boy turned pinker. I know, it's just, um, a little weird. To not be in the same bed. Weren't you the one who didn't want to be? Yamaguchi's eyebrows furrowed. When did I ever say that? You said we shouldn't. But that doesn't mean. Seems pretty clear to me. It's not. Then why? Because. I really, really want to go, okay? To what? To everything. To do gross, disgusting, revolting things with you. Tsukishima blinked upwards at him, and Yamaguchi's face flushed a deeper shade of scarlet as his words caught up with him. Oh my god, wait, no, I didn't mean. Well not that I think you're not I mean, not to say I wouldn't, but. That's not the gross I meant, or, I mean. Yamaguchi's face was crimson red. I meant do stuff like make gooey eyes over boba and post 16 pictures of your face in a single day and that gross stuff. Okay, I want to do all that sickening, repulsive stuff and I want to do it with you, and. Oh my god. Yamaguchi's eyes widened. Oh my god. What am I saying? I am so sorry, Saki. you can ignore that, oh my god, I'll... Yamaguchi. Just shut up. Please. The green-haired boy looked down to find that Tsukishima's cheeks were dusted in a deep red, and his eyes grew even larger. Oh, uh, um. Okay. I'll... Yamaguchi. Right, right, being quiet now. Um. They fell into silence once more, Yamaguchi's hands propping him up above Tsukishima as the shorter boy held his breath. The blonde, meanwhile, had turned his head to the side so that he wasn't looking directly into Yamaguchi's eyes, but Yamaguchi could still see that his cheeks were bright red, and when he next spoke, Tsukishima's voice was quiet. Me too. What? I wanna do those gross things with you too. Yamaguchi's eyes widened. You do? Yeah. The green-haired boy's face split into a wide grin. Like, actually? Yes actually. Like, can we be disgusting? I really, really want to be disgusting. As in 17 stories a day disgusting. Yeah, we can yeah, whatever. We can do whatever. Oh my god, Saki. Yamaguchi squealed, letting his weight fall down as he buried his face into Tsukishima's neck and crushed him in a hug. We are going to be so, so gross. Yeah, well. Yamaguchi could feel Tsukishima lift up a hand to adjust his glasses from behind Yamaguchi's head. Looking forward to it. Kirogen. Kiru isn't the one saying it but I think the story makes more sense from his perspective. Kiru set down his phone, looking over at where Kenma was lying down on the other side of the couch. Hey. Kenma. Time for sleep. Okay. Kiru waited, but the setter didn't even glance up from his game console. After a moment, Kiru sighed, sitting up. Kenma. Let's go. I'm not moving. Seriously? The middle blocker raised an eyebrow. You need me to carry you to bed? Again? Kenma's gaze remained fixed on the Nintendo. No, I mean we should stop sharing a bed. Kiru's eyebrows furrowed. But we've always shared a bed. Yeah, I know. So? So what? So what changed? I don't know. Kenma. Come on. Kiru stared at him for a long moment, and Kenma let out a little huff. His eyes still fastened on the game and his fingers still quick. Fine. It's just weird now. Why? Because. You got hot. I what? Kiru gaped at Kenma, whose focus hadn't moved from his console. I said you got hot. That's what happened. I. Kiru burst out into laughter, grabbing his stomach as he doubled over to cackle. Kenma shot a little glare at him. Stop laughing at me. God, Kenma. Chuckling, Kiru stood up, walking forward to grin down at where Kenma was still lying on the couch. I've always been hot. No. You used to be scrawny little noodle arms. We're not. We're too. Kiru leaned down. Come on, Kenma. Bedtime. 
I told you, I'm not sleeping in a bed with you. Where are you gonna sleep then? The couch. Kuru raised an eyebrow. You think I'm gonna let you take the couch? The setter's forehead creased as he furiously pressed at a button on his console. Well I'm not moving. R2. R not. Smirking, Kiru leaned down to scoop Kenma into his arms. R2. Kenma frowned as Kiru started towards the bedroom. I don't have the energy for this. You literally don't even have to move. No, Kiru. It was bad enough when you were all gangly and noodle why but now. Kiru paused looking down to see that Kenma was scowling at the Nintendo. The middle blocker's eyebrows furrowed. What are you talking about? Kenma's face scrunched up, his forehead creasing. You already made me go to practice, Kiro. There is no way I am spending this entire night having to focus. Focus on what? Me? No, the opposite. Huh? Kenma's frown deepened. You're stealing energy. Stop it. Stop what? Being you. How? Figure it out. Kiru laughed, kicking open the door to the bedroom and setting Kenma down on the bed. That's a bit difficult, you know. Now go to sleep. You're not making sense. Kenma frowned, starting up his Nintendo once again as he crawled under the covers. You could have at least been a little considerate, you know. Um? Like why couldn't you have waited until you went off to college to get hot? Seriously not cool, Kiro. Are you just going to continue calling me hot, or? Yes. Hot 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 hot. Kiro barked out a laugh, covering his red face with the palm of his hand. Well now you're the one who's being unfair. And not. R2. You're literally the one who decided to go get attractive. Kiru swallowed, massaging his forehead. Please, Kenma. You could have at least thought about the way I would feel. Trust me. I have thought about the way you feel. At long lengths. No, because if you had, you wouldn't have. God, Kenma, enough with the jokes, okay? You know how I feel, so it's not fair to. Kenma frowned at the game console, aggressively pressing at one of its buttons. Well I'm sorry if me being in love with you has been a bit inconvenient, but it hasn't exactly been easy for me either, alright. The gears of Kiru's mind slowed down, his eyes wide as he gaped at the setter. Now go. I'm tired. But Kiru didn't move. Kenma's gaze was still fastened on his game, his eyebrows furrowed and his fingers quick. Slowly, the middle blocker's mind began to regain its basic functions. You being, what? I do not have the energy to explain this again, Kuro. Again? Yes, again, we've been over this. No, Kenma, I think I would remember if we'd talked about this. Kuro. Now is not the time to play dumb. I'm not playing anything, Kenma. What do you mean you? Really? The setter's fingers froze, his face pale as he looked up at the middle blocker. Oh my god. You didn't know. Kiru shook his head, and Kenma groaned, ducking his head underneath the covers. Oh my god. No, wait, Kenma, this is a good thing. Kiru sat down on the bed to try and tug the blankets away from Kenma's face, but the setter's grip was tight. Please leave. No, no, I thought you knew. That I, uh, also. Kenma cautiously poked his head out from underneath the sheets. Really? Kiru nodded, his cheeks tinted pink, and Kenma's face scrunched up as he brought out his hand to smack the middle blocker's arm with the Nintendo. Well you could have told me. You didn't tell me either. Because it was obvious. I thought so too. You're sleeping on the couch. What? Turning onto his side and snuggling into the pillow, Kenma pulled the sheets back over his shoulders. I told you, I am not dealing with this right now. Wait. Kiru's grin grew crooked. So you actually do think I'm hot? Good night, Kiro. I bet you thought the noodle arms were hot too. I said good night. Kiru smirked as he stood up, starting towards the door. Can I say it now? Kenma didn't even open up his eyes. Say what? Love you, Kenma.
The setter immediately ducked his head underneath the covers once again, and Kuru laughed, letting the door swing shut behind him before pausing in the hallway to let his grin grow. Oh my god. Aiwayoi. Aiwayzumi sat on the ground, his head resting against the foot of the bed. He kept his gaze focused on the movie playing on the television in front of them, but he could feel Oikoa, who was lying on his stomach atop the mattress, reaching out his fingers towards the ace's hair. Damn it. Swallowing, Aiwayzumi scooted away from Oikoa's hand, still keeping his eyes pinned on the TV. The setter paused, but then he dropped his hand back onto the bed sheets and ref accused his attention on the movie. Aiwayzumi let out an exhale. That was close. After a couple of minutes had passed, however, Oikoa's fingers started to reach out towards Aiwayzumi's hair once more, and the ace had to quickly lean forward to avoid them. Shit. Oikoa narrowed his eyes. What are you doing? Coughing uncomfortably, Aiwayzumi quickly busied himself with stripping off his socks. I'm getting hot. It's winter. I have sensitive feet. Since when? Since, well I don't know, crap Ikoa. They're just prone to sweating, alright. Ikoa paused to stare at back of Iwezumi's head for a moment. Okay. After tossing the socks to the other side of the room, Iwezumi leaned his head back against the foot of the bed once more. When he felt Ikoa's fingers begin to play with his hair, however, Iwezumi immediately jerked his head out of the way. Alright what in the world is going on? Oikoa grabbed the remote control to switch off the television. Aiwezumi scowled, turning his head to glare at the setter. Oi. What was that for? You're acting weird. Me? I'm the one acting weird here? Oikoa raised an eyebrow. So you think I'm being weird? Well I'm not the one trying to play with my hair. But I always do that. Yeah, well. Aiwezumi's mouth floundered for a moment. Look. I'm just not being weird, alright. Oikoa narrowed his eyes. Fine. Then get on the bed. What? You're not being weird, right? There shouldn't be an issue. Well there is, okay. So you are being weird. I'm not being weird. But we've always shared a bed when you sleep over. Well I think we should stop. Oikoa went quiet, only staring forward into Iwezumi's eyes in silence. Heat creeping up the back of his neck, the ace ducked his head. Why? Oikoa's voice was quiet, and Iwezumi sucked in a deep breath, fiddling with his fingers. You got a girlfriend, alright, you got a girlfriend and now it's just weird. Oikoa didn't respond for a long moment. When he next spoke, however, his voice had gone flat. Oh. Yeah. I see. He paused. Well I wouldn't have said yes if I knew you were going to do this. Iwezumi scoffed, looking up from his hands. Yeah well you did, so. Oikoa narrowed his eyes as he studied Iwezumi for a long moment. Fine. Okay then. Grabbing his phone, the setter pulled it up to his face and started to type something. Iwezumi narrowed his eyes. Hey. What are you doing? Oikoa continued to press at the small keyboard's letters, not even glancing up from the screen. Oi. I'm breaking up with her. What? Oikoa still didn't look up from the keyboard. Well you said we couldn't keep doing the things we've always done if I'm dating her, so. But. You can't just. Iwezumi's mouth flailed for words. Well at least don't do it via text, you crappy jerk. Fine. Oikoa closed his messages and started to dial a number. Iwezumi, however, only gaped at him. What the hell are you doing, Shitikoa? Calling her. What? You said I shouldn't do it over text. You. Well what are you going to say? Oikoa pulled the phone up to his ear. That Iwa-chan won't let me touch him if we're still dating, and so we have to break up. What? Iwezumi flushed a deep red. You can't dump somebody like that. Why not? Because that's so crappy, you asshole. What, would you rather I? But then he stopped, his tone changing. Oh, hey there. I was wondering if we could talk. 
Iwazumi's eyes widened, and he quickly yanked the phone away from Okoa's ear to press the mute button. Okoa. You can't actually do this. I'm the one who's dating her, Iwa. I think that gives me the right to break up with her, too. But not like this. Toru. Are you still there? You have to be at least able to give her a good reason, Shutakoa. But it is a good reason. No, asshole, it really isn't. Hello? Okoa's gaze moved from Iwazumi to the phone before returning to Iwazumi once again. Well fine. If you don't like my reason so much, you give her a better one. Iwazumi's eyes widened. Wah. But Okoa had already unmuted them and was pushing the phone towards Iwazumi, raising his eyebrows expectantly. Is anybody there? Oh. Well. Iwazumi cleared his throat as he shot a dirty look at the setter. Hello. Hey, um, who is this? This is, uh, Iwazumi. Okoa's friend. Oh, Iwazumi-san. Hi. Why are you using his phone? Okoa, well. He wanted me to tell you something. Oh, okay. What is it? Iwazumi glared at Okoa, but the setter only arched his eyebrows and nodded his chin at the phone. The ace took a deep breath. Okoa wants to break up with you. What? Iwazumi held his breath as the other end of the line was silent. When she next spoke, the girl's tone had turned angry. And he sent you to do this? Yeah, well. Iwazumi scowled at Oikoa. He's a really crappy guy. The girl went quiet for a long moment. Well did he at least tell you why? Iwazumi paused. He, uh, he just thinks you're too good for him, alright? Okoa dropped his head into his hands, and the girl scoffed on the other end of the call. Yeah right. What did he actually say? That he thinks you're really nice, and smart, and pretty, and that you're too. Don't lie to me. What did he actually say, Iwazumi-san? That he doesn't deserve. Iwazumi-san. The ace paused, quickly pressing the mute button. What the hell am I supposed to tell her, crap Okoa? Sighing, Okoa raised his head from his hands. Well if you'd just give it to me, I'll just explain to her the truth and then. You can't do that, dipshit. Why not? I can tell that you're on mute, you know. Because it makes it seem like you. Iwazumi stopped himself. Like I what? Like you. He stopped again. Okoa leaned forward. Like I what, Iwa? Hey. Say something. Iwazumi screwed his eyes shut. Like you enjoy doing love a dove things with me more than with her, alright? The room went dead quiet for a long moment, and after a prolonged pause had passed, Iwazumi turned red. Damn it. That was the wrong thing to say. When he finally brought himself to crack his eyes open once more, however, Iwazumi found Okoa staring at him with a determined look in his eye, his voice soft. Well so what if I do? Iwazumi froze. What? Okay, you know what? You two are both jerks. Screw you, I'm not dealing with this shit anymore. The call beeped dead, but Iwazumi just continued to stare at Okoa in silence, the setter looking back with resolute expression. You do? Okoa rolled his eyes. I literally just broke up with her for you, Iwa. Iwazumi scowled. Oh. I think I was actually the one too. But then Okoa was leaning forward to press his lips against Iwazumi's and the ace went dead still, his entire body stiff and his eyes widening. What I mean, Iwa, is. When Okoa pulled back, his cheeks were a bit pink, but his expression was still resolved. I would rather do that with you than with her. You would? Yeah. I would. Iwazumi swallowed hard. Finally, after a prolonged second of silence, he managed to push himself to his feet. Move over. What? I said move your stupid ass over and make some room for me, Crick. Okoa's face broke out into a grin, and he quickly scooched over on the mattress. So does this mean you? Plopping down on his stomach atop the sheets, Iwazumi grabbed the remote control, frowning. Yes. Now be quiet. Okoa's smile grew. Iwa. We're finishing this movie. But you. SHH. 
clicking the play button again, Iwazumi fastened his gaze resolutely on the television screen in front of them, his face red. After a long moment, he could hear the sheets rustle beside him, and then there were some fingers playing with his hair. So is this okay? The back of the ace's neck turned a deeper shade of scarlet, but he didn't move his head away. I said be quiet, Krapakura. Aikura, however, only smiled. Okay, Iwa-chan. The end.